Betty Butter bought some butter, but she said the butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, it will make my batter bitter, but a bit of better butter will make my batter better, so it is better that Betty Butter bought a bit of better butter. Hey, all of these captions you're seeing within this video were generated automatically within DaVinci Resolve 18.5 Studio and are 100% totally unedited so you can see how accurate they really are for yourselves. So that's what we're going to talk about, auto-generated captions. Here's everything I think you need to know. First up, where? Well, they're available on the edit page, the cut page, and the iPad version of DaVinci Resolve, but you do need to be on DaVinci Resolve 18.5, which is currently still in beta. I've put a link down below if you want to go and download it for yourself. And yes, you do need to be on Studio, which is the paid version of DaVinci Resolve, as they're not available on the free version. Now, that's because they're using the DaVinci Resolve Neural Engine, which is the DaVinci Resolve AI engine, which runs on your GPU. I personally am running an NVIDIA RTX GPU, which does the job really nicely. And you can get your own NVIDIA GPU from this video's sponsor, Scan. .co.uk. Scan.co.uk are one of the biggest and most trusted resellers of NVIDIA Studio certified products in Europe. So if you need an NVIDIA GPU, a custom NVIDIA Studio PC, or even an NVIDIA Studio certified laptop, Scan have you covered. They're also a registered reseller for Blackmagic, so you can get your speed editors, resolve panels, Blackmagic cameras, and of course your DaVinci Resolve licenses too. Plus free next day delivery and award-winning customer service. So, click the link in the description below to check out Scan's line of NVIDIA Studio approved laptops, PCs, and other goodies. But hey, so, how do you run the auto-generated captions? Well, let me show you real quick. So here we are, first up on the edit page within DaVinci Resolve. So I have the timeline open, as you can see. Then all we need to do, click on timeline at the very top, and come down to create subtitles from audio. If you're on the cut page, or using the iPad version, you have this little icon over to the left, which is called your timeline actions. It's a new one. Give that a click, and then there's an option to create subtitles from audio. Whichever method you choose, once you've clicked that, this little pop-up will appear. We have language. Currently, the only option is English. I'll come back to that in a second. Presets, there's three options. I don't believe you can create your own just yet. And then you have max characters per line. If you want shorter, snappier subtitles, reduce this number. And if you want longer ones, you can increase it up to 60. I'm going to leave it somewhere in the middle and then simply hit create. DaVinci Resolve will then analyze your timeline and create your captions automatically. English only. Yes. Currently, the only language that's supported with the auto-generated captions is English. But remember, this is still in beta. This is the first release of the beta. More languages are coming. I actually spoke to one of the lead developers for Blackmagic while I was over at NAB in Vegas last week, and they confirmed that more languages are in the works. They will be coming eventually. I don't have an ETA. I don't have a list of languages or anything like that, but more languages are coming in the future. How long does it take? Well, that 19 minute timeline that you've just seen me run, that took between 35 and 40 seconds. Mine runs at about 28 times real speed on that NVIDIA RTX 4080 GPU. It will depend on your hardware, on how quick or how long this takes to run, but generally, in my experience, it's pretty quick. You're generally not waiting long. If you're running a 10 minute timeline, yeah, 20, 30 seconds or so, and you're good to go. On that note, as mentioned, it uses your in internal hardware. It's not cloud-based. It doesn't use the cloud at all. Everything is done locally, so you don't need an internet connection to run the captions, which from my perspective is a massive bonus. We don't need to worry about confidentiality, about it going somewhere else and then coming back. And it also means you can just do it without an internet connection. So if you're in a public place, you don't need to connect to their Wi-Fi. If you're on a plane, you can get work done there. It's just way, way easier having it all done locally rather than pinging off to some random server somewhere. Can you customize them? You can, but it's limited. Let me show you. So once you've generated the captions, this is how they appear on the timeline. So we now have this subtitle track, 610 clips, and these are all the individual captions as you can see here. So what we need to do, let's just zoom in onto our timeline and we can see the individual captions. 
So if the timing's wrong, what you can simply do is move this edit point, just click and drag in the same way that you'd move any other edit point on your timeline. To amend the individual caption, simply give it a click, open up the inspector, video, caption, and you have the controls within here. So we do have the manual in and out time codes if you want to amend it that way. And then we have the caption itself. So we can just click in, type, make any changes, do what we want, fix any spelling mistakes or anything like that from here. If we want to customize this individual caption, we can click on customize caption, and then we have font family, face, color, size, alignment, and position for this one particular caption. If we scroll down a little bit more, we can manually add a new caption if we need to split it up. And then we've got previous and next. So if we click on next, we can just whiz through all of the captions, making any changes as required. Now, if you want to make any changes to the style of all of the captions on the timeline, you simply click on track up here, and then you have the style options for all of the subtitles on this subtitle track. So we can change the font. Let's go with something a bit jazzier. The size, the spacing, the kerning, the stroke, transform. We can add a drop shadow and we can add a background color if we want to. So if we scroll through, you can see now that has taken place on every single one of these captions. If we scroll right down to the bottom, there's also some other options. So let me just untick use project settings. I'll show you that again in a moment. We have the max line length, so we can reduce this if we want to, to have the subtitle go over two lines. We've then got the min duration, the minimum duration, and max CPS, which is characters per second. You can amend all of those within here, or if we open up the project settings and then go to the subtitles option from the left, they do appear within here, so you can set them per project from within here and set a default if you need to. But that unfortunately is literally it. You can't animate them in any real way, you can't keyframe anything, you can't drop effects or transitions onto them. You're kind of stuck with how they look out of the box. What I would like to see is a fusion-based subtitle transition. So then we could create our own little animations so we can make them pop in and pop out, highlight all of the captions, drop the transition on, and off you go. We could really quickly make them in a very similar way that we create current transitions. You can currently drop transitions onto titles. So if we could just then drop the transitions onto the subtitles, that seems to me like a quite an easy fix to be able to jazz them up and animate them quite quickly and quite nicely. Obviously, people will want more options, more ways to customize them, like this highlighted word style subtitle, which is really popular. I had to do that manually because it wasn't available by default. We know that that's possible within Resolve because the new transcription feature does that as you play through. So again, just having some of that additional customization, that freedom to make them look how we want them within the captions, within the subtitles would be awesome. But at the moment, it's not possible. Now, I just want to say this is the first iteration. Blackmagic have got this out. It's still in beta. A lot of this may already be planned. I don't know. For a first attempt, it's great. This is just some customization, some additional things I'd love to see in the future. Here's something else just worth mentioning. If you've made any amendments to any of the captions on this track, either the words or the timing or whatever, if you then go to timeline and create subtitles from audio once again, it will overwrite any of the changes that you've made because it will wipe out this entire subtitle track and then recreate it. To get around that, what you can do is lock this track down. So over on the left here, where we have subtitle one, there's a little padlock icon. If we give that a click, it will lock this subtitle track. So now if we go to timeline, create subtitles from audio and then create, and then once that's finished generating, you'll see you get a subtitle to track. So rather than overwriting it, it's made a new track and created us some more captions. You can then simply enable or disable the one that you actually want to use in your final video. For a practical example, let's say you've finished a project, you've customized the subtitles so they're exactly as you want them, then you've had to go in and add a new section. Rather than having to regenerate the entire thing and make all those tweaks once again, we'll lock this track. We'll go to timeline, create subtitles from audio, and then create. That will create your second track. So then we can just unlock the first one, grab that new section from the second track, 
and drag it down onto track one and then get rid of track number two. And then we only have to make those small tweaks to this new section we've just added in rather than having to redo all of them once again. Does it handle multiple tracks? Yes, it doesn't really seem to care what track your dialogue is on. It would actually be quite nice to be able to specify the track, to be able to go just look at this track, don't look at the others, if you've got some background stuff going on that maybe is getting picked up. But at the moment, it just looks at all of the audio on the timeline and creates the captions from that. I've set up a quick example, so let me show you. So in this example, I've split my dialogue over three tracks, as you can see here. So we're just simply going to go to timeline, create subtitles from audio. We're going to hit create. We'll let this run through. And as you can see, it's created all of the captions, the subtitles across the entire timeline, regardless of what track the dialogue was on. Quick update, manually muting the tracks will eliminate those tracks from being picked up by the auto-generated captions. So you could do it that way if you wanted to. What about music? As you can see, music will be recognized and then simply displayed as music. As of yet, in my testing, I've not had any issues with it trying to caption the music. It just recognizes the music and then ignores it. It could be a feature though maybe as an option to caption music if that's what people wanted. It does appear at the moment that it's just being ignored. I have background music running in some of the tests I've been doing. And as long as the volume is low enough, it's not making any issues. It's not causing the captions to be less accurate or anything like that. Sticking with accuracy, are they accurate? In my testing, yeah, they've been pretty good. Again, you can see for yourself because this whole video was captioned in DaVinci Resolve, so hopefully these are accurate even with my accent and the fact that I do like to slur my words. They're not perfect, obviously. It will make some errors. That's kind of expected. You're never going to get anything that's 100% accurate all of the time. It will depend a lot on audio quality, volume, accents, pronunciation, all that sort of thing. But overall, in my testing, it has been pretty accurate, so I've been really quite impressed especially for a first attempt. Does it handle multiple people? Meh, yes and no. It does work with multiple speakers, but it just creates the captions in exactly the same way and, you know, dumps them all together. Some other auto-generated caption software out there actually allows you to name the speakers, which is a cool implementation. So maybe I'd like to see something like that within DaVinci Resolve in the future. Either a way to name the speakers and then have that clearly marked on the subtitles or being able to assign different styles to different speakers, something along those lines. For just talking head videos like this, it's currently absolutely fine, but it may become a bit of an issue if you're doing a long interview, for example, and you've got the two people on screen at once, it won't be immediately clear who the subtitles are for. Oh, hey. oh. I'm here at Small Rig with Carlo. Carlo, nice to meet you guys. But yeah, first time at AB, big stuff, meeting a lot of uh, YouTubers and creatives. Like me? So, this guy especially, <laughs> you know. Yeah, amazing, well it's awesome to meet you. Yeah, you too man, take care. Woo. But again, first iteration, I'm sure they'll add some improvements to that in the future. Last but not least, exporting your subtitles. There's actually a few different ways that you can get these subtitles either out or bake them in to your video. If you want to just get these subtitles out without actually rendering the video, so you want to go back to a previous project, for example, that's really quick and easy to do. So let me show you that first. Once you've generated your subtitle track like I have here, simply right click on the subtitle area over on the left. We have the usual few options like add and delete. And at the bottom, we have export subtitle. Give that a click and export subtitle window will appear. We can give it a name and then we can choose the save as type. We have two different SRTs with and without formatting, a VTT, TTML and a DFXP. If you want to upload these to YouTube, for example, the best option is subtitle files without formatting SRT. I've tested that, works really well on YouTube. Export, upload, job done. When it comes to actually exporting the final video, you have a few options as to how you want these subtitles to be treated. It's all handled on the deliver page. So once again, let me show you that. So I've got my subtitles all ready to go. So let's jump over to the deliver page. Now I've got a custom export. 
This will work for basically any of the standard exports you'll use within DaVinci Resolve. If you scroll down to the very bottom, you'll see you have a subtitle settings. It's hidden right down here. If you expand that, you need to tick this export subtitle box, and then you've got format and export as. So the format, three options as a separate file, which will create an SRT file, the same as just exporting it from the timeline as embedded captions. So this will actually bake them in, but not make them visible. So if you were to open this video up within VLC player, for example, you could then turn on and off the subtitle track. That doesn't work on YouTube or most other online platforms. So there you go. And then the last option, burn into video. So this will actually burn the captions into the video file itself, which is what I've done for this video, which is why you're seeing the subtitles on screen now. Again, if you're doing this for YouTube and you don't want them actually burnt into the video, you want the closed captions, you'll want to select as a separate file, export as SRT without formatting, tick the box to make sure they're actually included within the export, add to the render queue, you get a separate SRT file you can upload to YouTube and then job done. And that is everything I think that needs to be covered with these captions. If you've got any other questions, any other feedback, put them down below. I can forward any of this over to Blackmagic. I don't have any inside knowledge or contacts really, but they are looking for feedback. That's why it's a beta. So let me know your feedback down below and I can compile this and send it over to them. Thanks ever so much for watching. As always, take it easy. I'll catch you next time. See ya.